Hey, what's up, fam? I'm in the next room, as you can see. I'm gonna try to straighten this beast up. And uh, there we go, there we go. <coughs> That's a little allergies, uh, not the corona, corona. But uh, hey, I wanted to, uh, to go ahead and get started. We're in week two of the Beatitudes. And so, um, so I have the, the Bible, the Bible, the, the Bible open. And so Matthew chapter five. So if you have a Bible, let's go ahead and grab it and land at chapter five. And so <clears throat> I, uh, I've been a part of lots of uh, moments, God moments, where I was speaking and I saw God do just amazing things. Um, I remember one time I was speaking at an outside event and it was just pouring out and raining. The sound system's all messed up. I mean, it is just a train wreck. It's like a nightmare, really, uh, type of scenario. And so just kind of figured out what we're gonna do, et cetera, and um, began to pray because I, I wanted to, I really wanted to, um, uh, to talk about a hero. And so it was like real popular, um, you know, I, I, with superheroes, like it just came into play, like Superman and things like that just came back out. And so after a long uh, hiatus or hiatus, however you want to call it. And so, but now like Superman and, and things like that have gotten popular at this point. Um, nothing like it is now with, with Avengers and whatnot. But in those days, it was like, it just came out. Like you didn't hear anything about superheroes and all of a sudden they drop it out. Superman and things like that. And so I was talking about being a hero, what it looks like. And obviously, with the gospel in mind, with that being center, was going to share the gospel and talk about the, the real hero, someone who saved us from our sin. But anyways, um, so we're, we're outside, and it's pouring down rain, and I'm like, oh gosh. And we are packing up all our stuff, and uh, the band is, and whatnot. And so we began to just pray on the side of the building. And I remember, we, we prayed, as soon as we got done praying, we walked, I walked to the side and it had nothing to do with me. It was just one of those cool moments where all of a sudden whew, it stopped raining completely. Matter of fact, it didn't rain anymore for the next like 25, 30 minutes. So I got it quit raining. People came back out of this youth event, um, <clears throat> a couple hundred people there. Um, and uh, it was by a road, so traffic, maybe not a couple hundred, maybe about a hundred. Um, and a uh, uh, main intersection, and so it quits raining. We get up and preach the gospel, and it was so awesome. We had a uh, few people come to know Christ through it, and we're going, oh my goodness, it's so amazing. When we got done, as soon as I said amen, about 30 seconds, the bottom fell out again. It was crazy. I'll never forget that, how we prayed. I don't know if it had anything to do with it, um, but we prayed, and we asked God to just stop it, stop the rain so that we can preach the gospel. And it was weird. We prayed it, and all of a sudden, we walked, and it was done. Uh, it's pretty amazing. So there's Jesus, and he is he is preaching. Okay, it's a sermon on the mount. And so we talked about this yesterday, um, you know, uh, verse um, three. And so he, it's, it's starting in chapter five. It says, seeing the crowds, he went up to the mountains, and then he sat down, and the disciples came to him. So he's like in a teaching mode. So kind of like this. So he's teaching them. He's sitting down, and he's like, um, and began to teach them. Um, verse two, it says, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we talked about it yesterday. Poor in spirit um, doesn't mean you're actually poor. It can mean that you're poor. You don't have much. But those who are really jacked up, those who don't have anything, which would be viewed as being poor. If you don't have anything, you're poor. Um, in their spirit, they have nothing. Um, they're able to reach out to the Lord and see God's goodness and his grace and be able to respond to the gospel. Verse 4. So we're going to be camped out in verses 4, 4 and 5. And so it says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So I, I love that. I think that's awesome because it says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so remember the word blessed you can replace with happy um, or those who mourn. So it's not saying like you just went to a funeral and you're crying and it's all that. Um, some people believe that, um, but what we get from this, because we know that Jesus is, he is staying on one road, right? And so he's not getting off on an intersection uh, and, uh, you know, on a turn ramp. Um, this is his exit. And then he's going to do his own little thing and he's going to come back on the main road. He doesn't do that. Everything kind of builds upon each other or it just should make sense. Um, excuse me. Um, um, 
with my sinuses. Um, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So those who mourn, it's talking about you actually seeing your sin. And so you're mourning your sin. You're like, man, I mess up. And you're really down and out about it. Not only you for yourself, but also for people. You actually see people, like Jesus said, they're like sheep without a shepherd. Like you actually grieve for people. Um, like people who are, who are just messing themselves up or doing things they shouldn't be doing or or those who are just waddling in their sin, like they're in the, they're an old pig, you know, um, just waddling in the mud. Um, I, I I have a little had a little dog. Um, she's brand new. She's a little puppy. She's ten weeks old. But man, there's something about her. Whenever she sees mud or a mud puddle, and she's comfortable like outside for just a few moments, she runs what straight to the mud puddle. Um, and so I think there's some people that just run straight to sin because it, it feels for them that they it, it makes them feel a little bit better in the moment. And so it's saying that those who mourn, you know, um, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so the Lord, we know that we, 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 we mourn in our sin. We mourn that the things that we do, it's not acceptable to God, um, the things that we've done. And we come to God with a, with a repented heart that he's faithful and just, able to forgive us of our sin. And then he, he will comfort us. And not just us, but he is not far off. He's not distant when we have family members or friends that are doing things they shouldn't be doing, that God will, and that hurts our heart, because it should hurt your heart, right? You should carry each other's burdens, right? It talks about that in James. And so, um, and so God will comfort you as you're grieving over people. Does that make sense? It should, it should. When, as you go to your schools, if you're young, uh, if you're a student, it should hurt your heart to see people continue just doing things. Um, it should hurt your heart for those who do say they trust in the Lord and they they choose to just do things how they want to do things versus following the Lord. It should hurt us deeply, and we should mourn for that. Um, we should come to God and ask God to, to reach them and to, to love on them, not in a judgmental way, but just in a way that it just hurts us. Because, be completely honest, when we become Christians, you know, we, we were bought with, 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 a, um, with a high price and not just us, but, but everyone in the whole world, right? And so we're all sons and daughters of the King if we have placed our faith in Christ. And so it should hurt us when our brothers and sisters are not doing what they should do because we're a family. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. All right. <clears throat> Verse five, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit, inherit the earth. And so I used to, when, I was, when I was younger, I, used to, I didn't understand what meek is. Uh, I still do not know what meek is um, to the extent that I feel like I need to know. Um, but but meek, meek is awesome because uh, meek means like humble, okay? It means humble. So happy are those who are humble, who are meek, who, who, are, um, who are content. Um, that'd be a good word, parallel word. Those who are humble, those who are content those who are um, satisfied with what God gives. Does that make sense? And so in a world we live in currently with the coronavirus and everything else, even before this, people were just adding more things and filling up their cup with the things of the world and anything to make them happier or uh, make them um, feel better, right? And so you, we have this hole in us, you've heard, you've heard that before, and what we've tried to do over the years is try to throw things in it and, and, and in the hope and with an expectation that it will help us in the long run. But it doesn't. The only thing that satisfies is Jesus, right? And, um, and, so, and so he says, blessed are those who, um, who are meek for they shall inherit, inherit the earth. And so um, <coughs> meekness is to be content too. It means to... Um, uh, it means to have that perspective, that um, kind of a perspective where you're you're looking at your life and you and instead of thinking that that you don't have certain things that you do use self control and use discipline and start thinking about the things that you do have because we've said this a thousand times I feel like I said this so much that you guys can probably repeat this after me is that sometimes we we wish for the blessings that we don't have when we do that we miss on the blessings we do have. And, um, and so I don't know why it's like that, um, but we've got to have perspective. Perspective is power. And so, but it takes self-control to do that. Um, and so the question I would even underline is, is Jesus really better? Is he really better? Because if he's really better, we've already considered all things rubbish, is what Paul would say. Uh, we consider all things a loss 
um, next to Jesus. Like next to Jesus, like everything's a loss. And so that now that we're going through this time now where it's really forcing you to not be with your friends socially, uh, uh, you know, within six feet apart, you know, a lot of you are at home. Um, you, you, yeah, if you are together, you're six feet apart um, and you should be. Uh, and I expect you are, and that you are, and then you, you're, not, you're not going to your activities, if you're playing sports, you're not doing that, um, hobbies, things like that, and so it's forcing you to have to be content, and, and so I pray that you're looking at what you still have versus what you don't have, um, and, we, and hopefully we can discipline ourselves and be meek um, and strive for meekness when we look and we're, and we're content with what we have. Um, and uh, we're not whining, okay? We shouldn't whine. We, we, are, we live in a very wealthy country, and we're going to be okay. And I'm here to tell you, too, that if Jesus is on the throne, we're going to be okay, right? And so, and we should. And we should walk around with that type of swagger, um, not to just be careless or to just do things without thinking. But we should have this confidence right now because our confidence comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from man, and it comes from God. And we should just walk around like, hey, listen, my daddy's going to take care of everything. Um, because he is. That's the, that's the truth. That's what this here, this whole thing teaches us is that Jesus will take care of everything. He will supply all our needs. We just got to come to him. And so the emotional, physical, everything, he will take care of everything. Um, and so, and he's alive. And if Jesus is alive and he's well, we're going to be fine. And so hope this encourages you. Again, look at those three questions that, that we always leave on the post. Um, but again, that's Matthew 5, uh, 4 and 5. I pray that, that we would mourn for people's sin and, and our sin as well. And I pray that we would strive for meekness and be content. Hope you guys have a good day.